Hello and welcome to Art with Anna. Um, this week we are talking about artist Gerhard Richter. He is a German artist um, and he was born in the 1930s. He is still alive today and he's 88 years old. Um, this man is kind of a trick of all trades. Uh, he is really fantastic at painting things really photorealistically, but he's most famous for his complete abstractions. So I think it's unique that you can get someone who's so great at doing two very opposite things. He also did some photography, he's done some um, glass sculptural installations, so he really has explored art in kind of all of the fields that there are. Um, but we're going to focus just really on a combination of one, well really two art pieces and we're going to kind of make them into one. Um, but first let's talk about what we'll need and then we'll get more into our artist. First we'll need a white piece of cardstock four or five colors of paint of your choice, paintbrush, and something to use as a scraper. I am using just a piece of cardboard. All right, so the two paintings that we're gonna focus on today, um, the first one's called Vermelog Grau, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong because it's in German. means grade distortion um, and this painting here is exactly that it's a great painting as you can see and it kind of looks like he took white and black paint and he kind of just took his finger and finger painted all over it that's what it looks like to me um, and he did quite a few of these kind of fingery painting um, looking creations <laughs> um, so that's one of the things we're going to focus on today is doing that style on part of our painting the other paintings that I really want to focus on today are the cage paintings. So they're right here. And these paintings are done by painting abstract layer after abstract layer and then scraping the painting in between. And he did a, he alternated using horizontal scraping and vertical scraping. So we're gonna work on that today. Um, it, it does create kind of like a cage or a grid looking looking pattern. Um, and he kind of used this technique in a lot of his different paintings, even his more realistic ones. It would look like he dragged something across, of, across it and it looked like movement. Um, if you saw this painting of a cathedral, you can see that he painted quite realistically, but then there is some sort of like scrape across. And I think it looks like the buildings are actually moving, like maybe they're shaking. Um, and he'll also, he did a painting of his uncle, which also has that scrape effect on it. And that kind of makes it seem like that, that moment is passing in time, like it's going kind of quickly, quickly in the past. Um, so I think that's maybe what he's going for in some of his paintings is, is the um, illusion of movement. So that's what we're going to work on today is actually using movement to make these paintings. While we're painting, we'll talk about his life a little bit and um, kind of how the theme of war has been reoccurring in his life. Um, but first, let's get started. Okay, so we are going to finally start making our art product project today. Um, the first thing we're going to do is take our white sheet of cardstock and we're going to lay it down. We're then going to just pick two or three colors and just straight from the bottle, put a few dots here and there on our canvas. This is an abstract painting, so there's really not going to be too much rhyme or reason to it. So once we have some color on our paper, we're just gonna move it around in any direction. We wanna cover most of our sheet of paper right now. It's abstract, so you can make whatever shapes you want. Um, again, just really working on covering our paper mostly. Um, 
All right. So the key factor to uh, Richter's cage paintings is that he uses a scraper um, to scrape side to side and up and down between layers. So this first layer of paint we have right now, um, mine looks something like this. We are going to take our scraper and we're going to scrape, scraping from right to left. with some horizontal lines just like that. So our next step is to put with different colors some more just dots on our on our page. We don't want to cover everything that we've just done um, so I'll put just some colors in some spots. But we'll still want to cover a decent amount of our paper. So with the black and orange that I chose, I've covered just some sections of my paper. And now I'm going to switch from top, or from side to side to top to bottom. So I'm scraping from the top down the bottom. So now we've got some vertical lines. So it's starting to look more like the cage paintings, right? They have a lot of layers of lines going different directions. We're going to do the same thing and go from side to side again and then one more layer and then go from top to bottom again. All right, so Richter was born in Germany in the 30s, um, early 30s. So he did live through Nazi Germany um, and his dad and his uncle who, had pa who passed away in war um, both served in World War II. So he was not... Um, he was pretty used to war because um, he later was then a part of East Germany, with the Berlin Wall, um, and that part of Germany was kind of um, more communist. So he went from a time where he was a part of Nazi Germany, um, and art back then had to be very specific. The Nazis were destroying art by, um, by Jewish artists, by just artists they didn't agree with. So art had to be very specific then, it was very limited. That was the same when... Uh, in East Germany. When it was more communist, really they were saying the art that you make needs to be uh, political and it needs to be kind of promoting this communist agenda. Um, when he came to the United States, he was expecting a lot more freedom in art, but what he found was actually a lot of art was based off advertisements. Um, that's a lot of the art he saw that was being made. And even we think of uh, Andy Warhol, his was also about that, uh, Roy Lichtenstein. A lot of the pop art was going on when he came to the US and um, it was a lot based on capitalism. So he did see a lot of themes of government throughout his life um, and I think that's reflected in his art. But also um, his cage paintings were done during a time where I believe it was Iran and Lebanon were in conflict and there was a bunch of bombings and we can kind of feel in the cage painting some sort of movement, right? Those back and forth, up and down strokes. There's a lot of, some gray in those paintings too. So um, it could represent some sort of conflict. We're not sure. Um, and then he also did a painting of 9-11. He did a painting of the Twin Towers. He used that same technique of scraping across, showing kind of movement. I think um, it can be literal that, you know, the towers were moving, they were falling, but also how it kind of shook America to its core. So um, a lot of his art is kind of war themed. He did a lot of war planes. Um, again, that, that painting of his uncle who was just going to war um, and who died just a few weeks later in war. So I think that's a big theme in his art. Um, movement and I think struggle are two things that he focuses on a lot. So that's something to think about while you're doing these paintings. version of the cage paintings. We have 
this abstract painting with lines that go up and across that was um, done by scraping. So the next point that we want to do, or the next part we want to do, is take just half of our painting. We're going to make half of it more like his um, gray painting, his gray distortion painting. I think that's what it was called. Um, so we are going to take just a few colors. I'm going to try to get a little more of this pink and kind of put blobs of that around the half of my painting that I'm choosing. So this was the painting that looks kind of like, um, like finger painting, sort of. So I am putting some pink and orange on the side. Make sure you like that. And I'm going to take just the edge of my paintbrush and really move it around in swirls. Just like if I was using my finger to move it around. You can use your finger if you want to. I don't want to get that dirty, so I'm not going to. Alright, so it should look a lot like this. You're just swirling it around. Again, no real rhyme or reason. But we want to keep kind of the individual swirls able to be seen because we really want that definition so that it looks like finger painting. So that's what my final product looks like. All right, so this should be our, this should be our final piece of artwork. Um, thank you guys so much for doing art with me this week. I hope you learned a lot about Gerhard Richter. Um, next week we'll have another video. After that, there will just be one a month. So um, look out for those. They'll be less frequent, but still happening. And I will see you guys next week and we'll make more art. Bye.